Hello, okay, so, look, Indie Stone released the 41.78 update, and I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to go through it with you and sort of try out this new kind of style, because let's be honest here, this is a very easy video to make, and I need more of that. Up front, right here, they have added a prompt for the updated terms of service, as they are now big boy game, and they have to fit in with other big boys. Basically what that means is if you don't want to be a good boy, get out. And for the faint of heart, they've added a sandbox option to disable the fake dead reanimation. And if you want to know more about that, I'll have it linked in the description. But by default, these are disabled in multiplayer. Thank God. And they've added a lot more sandbox options, like corpse maggot spawning to be disabled or limited to corpse inventory, an option that disables poisoning food, which would have helped Spoodle a lot. Very, very simple things here. You can... I don't feel like any of these are necessarily important to go over in detail. I do like this, they've added randomize options for zombie behavior in terms of memory sight and hearing. I think that is like, that negates the need for a, okay, no, it doesn't negate the need for that random zombies mod. I think it adds to it tremendously. I will, I'll, re I'll recant that. And now fuel pump content, and that might might have been a thing for a couple updates, but this is my first update video, boys, okay? So bear with me here. Fuel pump content now has the incredibly rare and none options, as well as super low in the loot rarity settings. So if you really want to hate yourself and go scavenge for fuel outside of already spawned vehicles, there you go, you can do that. I don't know why you would. I don't know who's crazy enough to do that, but you can. This is something I've been looking at because I saw that they had done it in, a, in previous patch notes, but they finally renamed item weight to encumbrance, which I appreciate tremendously because I couldn't think of a joke. It honestly doesn't matter to me. I'll be real with you. The difference between weight and encumbrance means nothing to me. I'm pretty sure Skyrim had both even. They were so in indecisive. Now this, I, I said earlier that a, a new update would negate the need for a mod. I think this actually does. So, an accessibility option that makes the player character automatically walk to a clicked container within a short within a short radius of three tiles. Negate the need for a mod, maybe, because with that mod you can do a lot more, like close windows, open doors, etc, etc, etc. But this is a start, and I think that eventually that will just be part of the base game. For people who want it, which is great, I, that's my favorite part about this game, is that it, it is a sandbox and you can play it however you want. And now that I have the option to set custom good and bad highlighting colors, everything's gonna be blue. I'm making everything blue. I don't... I don't care about my game literacy. Okay, this one is huge, actually. This is huge for me because I am a an avid walker. I walk everywhere, and I hated doing it. So the they've added an option to bind walk to to a key instead of having to go through the right mouse button menu. I hate. I hate having to go through a context menu that is just, here's your options in a lit- like, Sims did it the best with the pie graph, okay? Project Zomboid needs that. However, I also would take this, having a keybind to do this for me. Added highlighting to clicked crates so it's easier to tell which crate is selected. I never had a problem with that. Is that really, like, new? I may have to go in and check what that means because like that doesn't that doesn't sound like it means anything to me. I never had a problem knowing what crate I was in. You know? Tiles that are being disassembled will now be highlighted in the bad color, red being the default, blue being mine. So will that apply to things like wardrobes, beds, everything? I think yes, but the wording and the way my brain works makes me think that they mean only like floor tiles, which is ridiculous. That doesn't make any sense, but that's where my brain goes. So I like this change quite a lot because that is something I do have trouble with, finding like what tile am I disassembling right now? Because I know I clicked this one, but did the game jack up and make me do this one? I like that a lot. Changed the is close vehicle door to play the door closing sound when the action is completed instead of its start. That, that, you know, that's just for feedback. That's a good change. Probably would have saved me one or 10 or 30 times. Actually, that, that gives me a really good lead in. I made a video, a very short video, maybe like a minute long, about how to survive your, how to survive your car being overrun. And I made it look like in that video that I died. Or did I make it look like I made it out? Either way, however the video went, in reality, I, I lied. 
I, it didn't go that way. Um, if you've believed me for this long, uh, on you. And we finally have the has metal tag for items. Uh, it was added to food and water items in metal containers, which will now set microwaves on fire when microwaved. I have a new theory on how I can ki- Sorry, I can't say that on YouTube. I have a new theory on how I can conquer Spoodle. Except the manhunts didn't really do that well, so we're not doing more. Oh, I gotta add that to my mechanics uh, guide. I am working on one. I've been working on one for months and it's not done yet. Uh, they've adjusted the mechanics UI so that both the battery charge and condition are included in the battery entry in the list of parts. Probably a solid change. They've also modified the vehicle mechanics UI to prominently feature the percent of a full tank of gas it has in addition to the battery charge. That one is fantastic. I'm so glad I did that because there, there's so often where like, I'll be in a life or death situation. I will be surrounded and they're closing in on me and everything is terrible and I, I want to stop, but I, the only way I have to get out is this car or so I think because my brain no good. And so I'm like, I'm opening the car and I'm checking the mechanics and I have to, I have to reorient myself on where the window is. I have to hover over the gas tank and like hope because I only found out recently that the gas tank is also put up top. So, you know. <sighs> I'm glad they made this change. Very nice. Thank you. Oh, guys, hey, m buckets are metal now. They replaced the world static model of buckets with a, with a metal icon and texture. Uh, honestly, I'm going to kind of miss the plastic icon and the 3D model, but I mean, I, I don't know. Something about that like plastic bucket in the apocalypse was just cozy for me, and I don't know how to explain it better than that. Added tooltip to club hammers and mallets, explaining that they are unsuitable for driving nails. That is interesting. I don't know if I've ever tried to use club hammers or mallets. I'm not even sure if I've seen mallets in the game, I'll be honest with you. Not the mallets I'm thinking of anyway. If it's like those wooden mallets that look like meat tenderizers, then sure. But like, I'm thinking of like the plastic mallets that like my grandpa has. Anyways, don't use them to drive nails. That's, that's all. That's really it. Added a check so cooked eggs cannot be used for inappropriate non-evolved recipes. And that doesn't sound like it's a big deal, right? But the way it's worded is just so good to me. I... <laughs> the wording... Eh, the structure of the sentence, I don't know what it is, but like something about this just makes me smile. And I gotta thank it for that. Removed the requirement for hot water to make a bowl of oats. Did they add a requirement? I've never needed hot water to make a bowl of oats. That's never been a thing for me. Like what? Am I playing with too many mods? Do I have to? Maybe playing with 90 plus mods isn't the way to go. Maybe. Anything further in the video where I'm like confused about it, I'm going to assume it's a thing that I have fixed with mods, okay? Like, is that fair? I feel like that's fair. Trash tiles now have a use and so do your and so do your excess of plastic bags. You can now use them as tinder and fuel for fires. I can't imagine they're very good. Toilet paper's probably still the best, but there you go. We're adding realism to the game. I know that's a strange concept, but the sawed-off shotgun recipe now has to use the hacksaw and not the garden saw. Reason being, and this may be a, a shocker, but a wood saw would be unable to cut through the metal barrel of a shotgun. Now, let me explain this to you. A wood saw, under no circumstances, cuts through metal. I'm gonna let that sink in for a minute, okay? Moving on. A lot of nothing here, really. Um, they've just changed cigarette script to prioritize using matches before a lighter, if you've got both. Why would you have both? Uh, a new doctor's bag and military duffel bag are added. They renamed hemophobic trait to fear of blood, probably for obvious reasons. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Also, don't be hemophobic. It's not doing anybody any favors. They've added a check to prevent items that weigh over 50 units from being put in vehicle seats. Apparently, I didn't know this until I just now read it, this is an ongoing issue with bags and containers that are modded over capacity. I didn't know those existed, I don't actually use bag mods, but anyway, I do game the system a little bit with traits to, to put way more junk into bags and containers. So those get stuck in seats when they have an encumbrance above 50. Not gonna happen anymore. So, my junk ain't gonna be stuck in the trunk no more. That's all I'm saying. I don't know why they did this. Remove the numeric information tooltip provided when selecting eat all half quarter food item context options. I liked it. I enjoyed knowing, like, 
oh yeah, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna eat like this much, or there's gonna be this, like, you know, I, I liked having that. I don't know why, but I did. I don't wish I didn't take that out. So I think this has been addressed, or I was wrong in my gun guide video. And I should, I am correct, I should make a new gun guide video for easy view. Anyways, a lot of replacing safe house armor and weapon distribution, and it looks like they've separated these into two different items. I didn't know that. I, that's news to me. It may not be news to you, okay? This is the first, like, patch note that I'm actually, like, going through, and it's only for the video. Anyway, I think I'm an idiot, and I just talked at length about how I was confused for the ammo strap, and... Well, they've changed the display name for ammo straps to be bandolier on account of consistent confusion with the weapon attachment that is also called ammo straps. I think that probably applies to me. I honestly, th I think the Indie Stone soul read that one and said, hey, Massey's kind of an idiot. Let's throw this one at him. They knew I'd be reading this at 12.30 a.m., two days after posting it. Oh, this is fantastic. I, I, I okay, I always hated how the firearm magazines are uh, named for the caliber and not for the gun. It has confused me and it has caused me to debug in the wrong magazines when I was doing the gun guide video. I don't think it had any actual impact on like my time spent making the video because I'm just inefficient as a person, but this would have saved me maximum two seconds. And I appreciate the change incredibly. I'm making jokes and I'm, I'm you know, haha, <laughs> because this is what YouTubers do. But I like this change so much. They've added a ton of missing models for things that I did not know were missing models. But I'm very glad that we have a model for fish sushi now. When are we gonna get shrimp sushi? Indie Stone, it's my favorite one. And so now we've got a lot of multiplayer changes that I personally enjoy myself, but this is, mo so far what I've read on this is just helping relieve stress for me as a server owner. So that's poggers, let's, let's get into that. Okay, these two sentences are music to my ears. Added a server option knocked down allowed to enable disable the PvP knockdown. This is a stopgap change to give servers an option to make PvP combat less frustrating before we can address PvP combat more directly in the future. One, if I ever do, another manhunt with Spoodle, that option is disabled for sure. Once we knock down, whoever got knocked down first was the loser every time. You go back and watch it, like that's why I fought with a stupid bleached uh, stir fry. I, I knew that in combat, he was probably gonna knock me first and it's just over as soon as you're knocked down. So honestly, I'm probably gonna run a poll and see if you guys want this disabled in the server as well, but anyway. I'm also glad to hear that they are going to focus on PvP combat in the future. I don't care when, I just, I'm glad to know it's happening because I, I trust Indie Stone a lot more than I trust other developers. Like, I don't trust, I'm gonna start ragging on developers and like burning bridges, we're not gonna do that. I don't trust Bethesda, so I'm glad to hear that they're adjusting uh, type anti-cheats. I don't even know what checksum is, but, <laughs> sorry. I don't even know what checksum is, but they've added it for multiplayer servers, and it's on by default for now. A ton of fixes here, frankly, and this is just me personally, I don't think any of them are necessarily important. I mean, not checking upper floors for other players or zombies when claiming a safe house is pretty, you know, I'm glad they did that. And the Lua environment being corrupted from using the Whisper command being fixed, that's, I'm glad those two happened. But frankly, the rest of these didn't mean much to me. So I'm gonna move on to the balance changes. And I may, the, this I might like speed through because going through uh, a checklist of balance changes doesn't sound incredibly intriguing to me. So we're gonna speed, we're gonna speed run this one. And immediately I am, I'm, okay, good, good, good. The M14 now has a chance to critical strike. Um, previously, the chance was zero. I didn't know that. It's now 30, which, yeah, yeah, good. Pretty much everything here about the M14 is proving that bigger number, not always better, as the M14 looks like it's gonna be doing a bit more damage on the crits uh, than the M16, especially if you have the uh, a good aiming skill. Okay, they didn't, they're not telling which one, which is interesting. Set some traits to be mutually exclusive to remove exploits or illogical combinations. I love the game for its realism and for, well, how, how, 
how well they mix RPG game elements with with realism. I, I adore the game for that. However, I am a bit of a goofster. I do love my exploits. So that part hurts a little, especially because they're not saying which ones. So I would love to have seen a, um, a list, but maybe that list was too long. They did say just some traits. I don't know. I, I do wish they kind of added that list because I, I would like to see it and comment on it immediately. I don't want to open the game up. I got to update it. I don't want to update it. <laughs> you know what it is. <laughs> got to go to bed. So now usage of propane torches is from 100 to 10. And that is a pretty big reduction, but the refills have been adjusted from 2 to 16 per tank. And alongside that, there have been changes to make sure that players find more propane tanks in the world to offset that reduction. Honestly, all things considered, fix a bug, give us some more propane tanks, it's all good. I like that. I do like to think that the changes to make players find more propane tanks is just adding more of those propane grills. Like, <laughs> Hank Hill is just gonna be excited to play Zomboid. Okay, I love that. I love this so much. Hot wiring of vehicle will now have a low chance of causing a car alarm. That chance being decreased further for higher electronic skill levels. For higher electronic skill level. For higher electronic skill level. I can't say that without making a dumb mouth noise and I don't care anymore. You're gonna deal with it because I, I, I wanna finish recording this. I've been recording for 30 minutes. On top of that, zombies pushing up against a previously unentered stationary vehicle have a chance to set off an alarm. And it looks like they've made car alarms a little more consistent by removing an RNG check that made the vehicle alarms go off only 20% of the time. Okay? Why would it be only 20%? Like, that doesn't... Frankly, I've never heard a car alarm that wasn't triggered by the player intentionally. So, actually, yeah, I'm kind of excited to finally hear surprise car alarms. This is a bad change. I'll say that. I... I'm not crazy about this one. You can no longer make melee attacks while inside a vehicle with the window rolled down. That? Garbage. You're telling me. I, I can understand swinging, right? Stabbing? Come on. I can see stabbing, right? Like, that just makes sense to me, right? I'm not crazy. Am I? I mean, that, that like, especially in a stationary vehicle. Like, if it's not moving, then, like, I, I wish at least this was dynamic. Anyways. Basically here, because I didn't understand this one, my brain's just not computing. This one makes it so that groin injuries from non-crawler zombies are less common. Which makes sense, that's not the brain zombies want. But now crawlers can inflict uncommon groin injuries. The wording of which scares me, and I'm just going to move on as if nothing happened. Oh, this one's good. Okay, we have a an increased 33% yield of metal parts when scrapping wrecked vehicles. That is good. I like that. I, 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 I love seeing changes in metalworking because I think metalworking is one of the like one of the skills that has like the least love right now. And I just I want to see them give more to that. And I think that's where we're heading in these next couple updates. And I think they have to because they're about to introduce a huge crafting overhaul. But I just I'm just happy to see that we've got some metalworking changes. And even tailoring, which is like the second one that I think needs a little, just a little more love. Just a little more armor, please. I, I would love to see the two mingle. I want metalworking and tailoring and armor crafting to be a thing, and it will eventually, I know, but I just, the future of this game gets me so excited. Okay, so anyways, we now have an increased spawn rate on thread, and there's a chance of sewing kits to be in glove boxes, whatever, fine. I don't know anybody who has a sewing kit in their glove box, but... I do know lots of places to find thread. My ferrets will tell you so many spots I didn't even know that have thread, okay? I had to do a little check around my house because I heard some funny noises, but we're back. I like this. I like this a lot. Trailer capacity now reduces slightly when damaged, as there was no point in repairing them before. I like noticing your weaknesses and incentivizing with pain. I love it. Increased number of plaster uses to 10, same as paint. I want to know, how many of you actually use plaster and paint and like how many of you really get like HGTV in Project Zomboid? I, I need to know because the the furthest I get into that is when I'm using debug menus and the paint tool and I really really don't really I like the the rustic look of, of the basic wooden walls and crates. I like that rustic look a lot so I don't really bother with like plaster and paint and whatever. 
I also don't have the time, but that's like a different issue. <laughs> I see this a lot, and by that I mean there's a mod for it. Only this? Like it just makes walkie-talkies lighter. And now that's base game, baby! That's base game! Woo! Apparently people are really upset that the tree branch doesn't match the crafted spear in terms of encumbrance, so they fixed it. That's uh, about all I got there. <laughs> Maggots are slightly more poisonous, so watch out, Spoodle. I don't know what happened when they added maggots to the game, but here's the thing. From the wording in these last four uh, points, it sounds like maggots were just spawning everywhere, which is a horrifying thought, and apparently it was so bad that it should just stay in the world item removal list. Don't remove that. I mean, they just, they made it a default item in world item removal list. So how bad was the maggot pandemic? That's all I want to know. And now we're down to the debug and modding stuff. Debug I use daily. I play Project Zomboid more in debug mode than I do as the actual base game for videos. But the modding side I'm not really into. I've wanted to be into it because I've had ideas for like really fun videos that need mods and I don't have the money to go commission somebody. Usually. So again, but for real this time, this might be something that I kind of skim through. This is actually one that I've had trouble with. I would um, spawn in like hundreds of zombies for a bit in a video and I just could not remove the bodies. So big ups on that change. I like it a lot. If this is talking about the paint tool tile picker, this is great. I l this is thank you. Thank you so much because I am so annoyed when I look for something that like is supposed to be interactable right i'm supposed to be able to like use or turn on or anything and it just doesn't work it's like loading in a dead item thank you for fixing that genuinely like oh thank you why am i getting hype over the tile picker fixes i don't i don't know man like i said skipping through debugging and modding and honestly fixes i might skip through as well let's see where i go all right let's see how i do holy crap there's a lot of fixes yeah i might skip through these this video i'm already recording for about an hour so Fixed makeup not being a appliable when in a car, I can tell you from experience. Uh, good fix. I didn't know this was a problem. Fixed shirts and other clothing items getting auto-removed from the world? Huh? I've never, like, encountered that, I don't think. So, I mean, good. I, uh, fixes are good. Fix the starting house in a really CD day. Sometimes not being on fire. Listen, why? Why'd you fix that? I never experienced it. I was never that lucky. In fact, I've still got a good 30 minute chunk of a previous stream that I want to cut down because it's just me yelling about CD Day and not getting anywhere for 30 minutes. It felt terrible. That video may come. It may not. I've got a lot of- I got a lot of videos recorded, not a lot of videos made. Anyways, I wish the house wasn't on fire. Ugh. Fixed mousetrap related collision? That's so ominous! What does that mean? Fix several tile and cutaway issues. I like that. I kind of wish that there was a smoother way to handle cutaways, and maybe they're working on it. But what I, I previously said that I haven't had issues with cutaways, but I have since, and it's bad. Like once I once I saw it, I was like, uh, oh, hey. so big ups in the fix. Oh, sick, sick. A fix to lighters, so they're not gonna drain completely when you just equip them, which has jacked up so many of my lighters. I don't know why I picked up my lighter. Like, <laughs> yeah, I have, I have, um, I've lost a lot of lighters just to that. Changed canned condensed milk to canned evaporated milk because people are really passionate about milk in canned lore. Why are you guys like this? Fixed climb sheet rope speed. I hope they made it faster. That was always a little bit buggy to me. Like, it just felt wrong. So I'm, I'm really hoping that that's just a little, just a touch faster, man. Just make it a little snappier. I don't want to sit there for three years when my character climbs two flights on a rope that he, that honestly I couldn't physically climb anyway. Moving on. Fixed frozen ice cream cones causing boredom and unhappiness. Added the good frozen tag for such items that should still be enjoyable when frozen. I didn't even know that ice cream cones did that. I have never had an ice cream cone in this game. So... I mean, y'all ain't eating out of the... What's the word for container? I'm not gonna fix this bit. I'm... I'm over it. Fixed characters not limping when they had their groin bitten. Well, I don't know about you, but I've never had my groin bitten. So, I can only imagine how I would walk afterwards. 
But just think of the absolute power move when your friend tells you that, hey, this zombie just bit me in the groin and he's bolting away. Just that's that's such a such a Chad move, but it, it's gone now, so don't don't worry about it. Hey, you're gonna get a cooked rotten egg when you cook a rotten egg. I just want you guys to know that and be very aware. Okay? This one kind of burns. Oh, well, I didn't mean to make that a pun or a joke or nothing, but like, I did, I, I always assumed that you were burning calories while you were running and while you were sprinting and walking because that just makes sense. But apparently no, like sometimes this game is so immersive and realistic to me that like, I just kind of assume things are working the way they should be. And then looking through the fix notes is like, hey, no idiot. Fixed being able to do fitness during sleep and while sitting in a car. No more burpees for you in bed, young man. That joke could be taken real wrong. Fixed an issue where the interaction between the two different separate zombie population sandbox settings was inconsistent between single player and multiplayer sandbox setting interfaces. Good, because for my server, I am constantly asked how they can turn around do a little 360 spin and a new horde of zombies has spawned right behind them and my response is that's not even possible so apparently it might be because i don't know how bad this interaction was uh if that's fixed now there you guys go if it's not i don't know man sorry like <laughs> i'm not a mathematicist i can't fix it fixed that it was impossible for a randomized name to be pat bren why does that matter? Why? I want to know why. I... There's no... There's a Pat Bren on LinkedIn who's from Canada. I'm going to assume. I'm not going to look any further, but I'm going to assume that that is a, uh, an employee of Indie Stone. Fixed being able to use the place item option to place infinite items in a floor square. Now you hoarders gotta find a new tactic. Now you absolute degenerate stinkies gotta find a new method to keep all your junk okay this is despicable i'm glad they fixed it fixed an exploit where players especially ones with desensitized were able to sleep immediately after breaking line of sight with zombies good because it's very weird to run from a horde jump into a house and sleep on the floor in front of the entrance like that's not gonna work <laughs> no <laughs> so good fix good fix more inconsistencies between multiplayer and, you know, everything else. Okay, good. Fixed being able to hold down keys while AFKing to grind nimble. I didn't even know that was a thing. But if you're holding down the keys, then you should be moving, right? Like, am I, am I just misunderstanding this? I'm probably misunderstanding this. And I'm gonna move on. <laughs> Fixed being able to put uncooked bacon into tacos and burritos. If I want to put uncooked bacon in my taco and burrito, let me. Fixed being unable to read in a car when the engine was running. Sometimes they're loud, man. My engine sucks. Like, I can't have nothing in my engine. Fixed transparency issue with trouser texture. That's a bad day at school, man. That is a bad day at school. That joke is really stupid. And if I put it in the video, don't. Good fixes all around. Just oh my god, it was an hour. Oh my god.